Hi, I'm Lisa Messenger, founder of Collective Hub. And by now you may have read about it or seen something about it, but I wanted to be the first to really tell you. After five extraordinary and extremely difficult years, I have made the very tough decision after 52 beautiful issues to close the print magazine. And in the essence of always being truthful, open, real, raw, honest, and vulnerable, I have chosen to do this with one of my best friends on the planet and our extraordinary editor, Amy Malloy. So, here's the story. Thank you for being with us. Wow, well, I'm so happy <laughs> to be here with you to share the story. I've been working with you for, what, six years now? Probably almost that, yes. So, some people might know this actually the second magazine that I've helped to bring to a conclusion, but I think for Collective Hub, from our first conversation, when you told me that you decided to close the print mag, it never felt like a failure to me. It always felt like this optimistic, exciting and empowering decision, not only for you as an entrepreneur, but for the whole Collective Hub community and everybody who loves us. Is that something that you feel as well about this decision? I do now 100%. I feel like it is absolutely unequivocally the right decision. But I think this conversation is so important because it has taken me 18 months of sleepless nights and more tears than I ever care to share and anxiety and you know questioning myself and so I realized that whilst our community that is what nearly I don't know 2.4 million or something now strung across all our platforms not just print I mean whilst this is going to be a shock because this is the first time that so many loyal dedicated amazing people in our community will have heard this news what I want people to take from this and we'll talk about this more is that I think this is a courageous decision and it's a brave decision and I want people to understand that it's okay to break things, it's mm -hmm. okay to pivot and morph and truly what kind of an entrepreneur or leader would I be if I didn't have the courage to continue to question, ask why, ask if there's a better way and, um, and do what needs to be done next. You know, at the heart of it all is we stand to ignite human potential. So it's time for some changes. I can't keep doing it the same old way. I'm all about bucking the status quo. <laughs> and we go into the decision, the reason behind your decisions in a moment, because I know um, you're keen to share them with the community. But um, first of all, let's talk about the cover, because that's probably why people are tuning into this video. Um, we yeah. went out with a bang and we decided not to, in the typical collective hub fashion, Mm. not to put a standard person on the cover or go with the vision that people would expect us to produce. Yeah. Um, and so, how did the idea come about to do an open letter to the community? <sighs> well, as we all know, I mean, our proudest covers, without fail, from you know our very first one, putting Lana Jane in something that we would never expect to see her in, to issue 23, putting a woman's back on the cover when Everyone said you had to put a brand new image and someone staring down the barrel of the camera and we broke every rule. I put, well, we put pink flamingos on the <laughs> cover. Like, you know, I always said and have given my team complete freedom to do whatever. It's just about always challenging people's expectations. And so it was really interesting, wasn't it, when I was like, well, if this is our final issue and talking to our beautiful art director Em and she's like let's do you know some amazing person because of course we've got Melanie Perkins in the issue mm -hmm. and um, and then I just said no let's make it really freaking boring and flat and kind of dull and let's do everything counterintuitive to what people expect and so you know there is no freaking way on the planet we weren't going to go out without a bang and um and I'm really, really proud of this cover. I can't find anywhere on the planet that anyone has ever done anything like this. Um, and yeah, I think it's important just to tell it how it is. And, and that's what we've always stood for, the story behind the story and being real and raw and authentic. And so I nearly swore, but that is what this <laughs> cover is about. It's just there. It is what it is. It's you know, it's back. not glossy, it's stripped back, it's bare, it's the truth. And um, 
Yeah, and, and I want to be strong, you know? And I think it said a lot that we talked about putting, or I think I suggested putting <laughs> you on the cover at some point. But it, was, it says a lot about the ethos behind the Collective Hub that you've always come back to the fact that it's much more than about you. It's not your story, it's about the stories of the community and empowering them. Yeah. Which is why, rather than focusing on you, the creator of the mag, we did an open letter directly to them. To the community, I mean, and you know, I get really emotional about this always because Lisa Messenger happened as such a freaking accidental byproduct. Like this has never and will never be about me. Mm. Although we'll get to that in a minute. Like my, um, my mandate, my vision, my passion, my purpose, absolutely, and my why, my whole existence for being is to serve. I know that in every single cell in my body. And so, you know, collective stands to ignite human potential. And Lisa Messenger, third party, third person <laughs> I have to talk about myself, is an entrepreneur for entrepreneurs, living my life out loud, showing that anything is possible. That will never change. But it's not about me. It's never been about me. But it is about the best way I can use myself as a conduit to serve. Mm -hmm. So before we talk about the end, or yeah. this particular end, Let's talk about the beginning and the dawn of Collective Heart. Ugh, yeah. Because a lot of people will know our story, um, but a lot of people might not. If they haven't read your books, they might not know the intimate details of exactly why you created Collective Hub in the first place. So um, how can you paraphrase it? How can you explain how this mission began? You know, and it's so beautiful because even as we announced the closure of the print magazine, um, I'm excited because I go back to startup and that mentality and that's what you know we're all about and and it was the most exciting exhilarating time and it has been the wildest most incredible journey that I've ever been on and I'm so incredibly grateful for every moment and I truly feel this is just the beginning but it was born exactly five years ago March 2013 with three people in my small office and um, all under the age of 25 and Ames was working even remotely then and um, none of us had ever worked for media and certainly never magazines and and it just started with one thing that we wanted to tell the stories of entrepreneurs and startups and tell the story behind the story and the grit and the hardship and the journey and um, and so we started and we broke every rule and that's very well documented and within 18 months the print magazine was in 37 countries and I was with Anna Wintour in New York and she was looking at us, you know, Anna Wintour, like the doyen of publishing globally saying how are you doing this and you know, I am so proud of our team, current and past and everyone who's been a part of this journey and the community and the collaborations for everyone lifting us higher and you know really carrying us and mm -hmm. um yeah it, it is truly absolutely testament that anything and i mean anything is possible and as you said earlier i don't see this as a failure at all i see it mm -hmm. as an opportunity to te to step into something bigger and a higher truer purpose um, and we were talking this morning about how when collective hub came out everyone said no one wants to read good news <laughs> no one wants to read good news yeah. So, did we prove them wrong? We freaking proved them <laughs> wrong. And we will continue to prove them wrong. I mean, that's the thing. <laughs> and the irony, um, you know, that I hardly ever tune into actual news because there's so much bad news out there every single day. And it's not that I'm naive to it or I turned a blind eye to it. It's just that we have consciously and purposefully chosen to shine a light on the extraordinary people doing amazing things, traversing all sorts of geographic locations and gender and race and everything else. And it doesn't matter. And that's been the beautiful thing. And um, yeah, I'm here to tell you good news. Absolutely does sell. Yeah. Mm. So I'm um, talking about the dark and light in life. Yeah. Obviously, Collective Hub, you have an amazing community, sold in so many countries incredible side products and sell-out events and all these wonderful things that have sprung from the print magazine. Mm. But we're here to talk about the closure. Yeah. So everyone will want to know why, why the decision to close the magazine. Um, I'm not going to use the phrase what went wrong because <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that anything has gone wrong. It's just part of the journey, but... No, a lot's gone wrong. <laughs> you know, and in life, but a lot's gone right, you know, but 
I and all of us need to take full responsibility for any part of the journey and so there are a multitude of reasons the irony of it is um we're actually selling <laughs> more copies of the print magazine than we ever have we just got more ranging in um Coles, you know Newslink our ranking keeps going up and up and up so it's not really that there's there's a number of factors and hopefully people can learn from my mistakes one thing is, um, for years when I had a team of three prior to launching Collective Hub, I was so embarrassed. I thought that a small team meant that you weren't successful and I was always trying to think, how can I have more people? And I hope there's a massive lesson here. Bigger is not better because what happens is as I stepped more and more into my purpose and my why and loving doing what I was doing with Collective Hub, this business grew into this huge beast with a lot of people and so what happened and this is such an important thing I went from being this kind of juicy creative game-changing thought leader risk taker you know always on the cusp of inventing and moving forward and creating to having to look after the operational side of a business that was scaling way too quickly and suddenly I was in systems and processes and finance and HR and IT and legal and stab me now like <laughs> that is not my sweet spot and so I started realizing that my soul was being sapped in the magnitude and the I was about to say bigness I'm still an awesome editor <laughs> the magnitude of this business and and it took me further and further away from my purpose that is one thing a second thing which is really important is that I'm a disruptor I am someone who wants to buck the status quo and to be counterintuitive and to push the freaking limits every day. And so whilst launching a print magazine into an industry that was highly saturated and people said was dead or dying, at the time it was like, yeah, like we are disrupting, we are bucking the trend, we've gone hard up against the big guys who have way more money, way smarter people, like, you know, they actually knew what they were doing and we went hard and we challenged them and that was exciting. But the thing is, five years in, it's like, who am I after what have we done? 6,000 plus interviews mm -hmm. with extraordinary entrepreneurs, tech companies, charities, like extraordinary people from a multitude of industries. So am I operating at my best, highest purpose? Am I serving to the best of my ability? If I'm stuck over here in the operational stuff, which is killing me and it's not my sweet spot, or... Am I better off being courageous enough to break things and to go, that was a freaking amazing journey, let's put a lid on it. Mm. I know how to do print. We know how to do that now, we've done that. I wanna take some time for me to get still and be and work out what is the next iteration of Collective Hub. Yeah. You hear this from so many, well, what's the next iteration of my purpose? It might not even be called Collective Hub. But it's like whilst ever I'm in here churning and treading water, I can't stop and be courageous enough to explore, to educate myself, to learn, and to get still enough to go, what is the next way for me to truly step into my purpose, to mm. serve all of you? Mm. So it's courageous, and, um, but I need to do that, you know? I really need to do that. And I love the line in your founder's letter. So you said, um, we pivot, we evolve, we grow, we learn. This is truly the magic of entrepreneurship. And is that a message you really want to send out into the community, that this evolution is actually a positive thing and oh you should God. embrace it? Yeah, and I think if we go back to my first ever <laughs> editor's letter, which um, you know, was one of the bravest things looking back, like, and this is a lesson about you know, say it, write it, then step into it. Like I had no idea how big it would be. But from the very beginning of this journey, I have said from every single cell in my body, we stand to ignite human potential. Mm -hmm. And I've said from the beginning, it is irrelevant. I mean, you can read about this on any platform or listen to any podcast or any interview I've done where I say it doesn't matter if it's a print magazine or if I'm speaking or if I'm writing books or running workshops or doing masterclasses or a myriad of other things. As long as we are still delivering on that purpose, it doesn't matter. So it's kind of beautiful in a way that we morphed, pivoted, iterated, changed throughout across a multitude of channels. And now I'm gonna break some of them just so we can do something even bigger and even bolder. And it's okay, and I'm okay with not knowing exactly what that looks like yet. Mm. 
Um, let's talk about money. Can we talk about money? Sure. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> because you've just said we're selling more magazines than ever, which is 100% uh, true. Yes, okay. Our social media community is growing. Literally on a daily basis, I get an email or multiple emails from readers saying, you've changed my life. Thank you so much. Yeah. I don't know who I would be without Collective and the lessons that you teach us. Yeah. But the magazine is shutting and that comes down to money. Yeah. Largely, because, uh, you know, I always say, and I've written a whole book, Money and Mindfulness, and I always say there's more than one currency than cash, um, but the reality is we have never been, and as a team, and my beautiful team are sitting behind the cameras, we have um, never been part of something that is so loved by so many, yet supported financially by so few. and. And I think this is a really important lesson for so many people. And again, I take full responsibility for this. Perhaps we're not creating a product that enough advertisers or partners or sponsors actually want to invest in anymore. But it has become increasingly hard to attract that kind of money. And, um, and it's hard when we tell stories of so many extraordinary brands and then we see them spending with other people. Um, you know, again, that comes back to me. Could I have moved faster and created better products? And also, I should have put a 2IC in way, way, way before someone who could run that whole operational side and let me be free to do the things that I really excel in, in my kind of genius zone. You know, mm -hmm. there are two very different types of people and, um, and they need to work side by side symbiotically and, you know, and perhaps I've been missing some of that, you know, I've got so many extraordinarily creative people in the team and perhaps we needed a bit more of the operational side. Mm. <laughs> and I've heard you say hundreds of times the Collective Hub is more than a print magazine, it's bigger than a print magazine, it's oh. not about the medium, it's not about pieces of paper stuck together, that's something you've consistently said since launch. Mm. So do you think that's truer than ever now? Oh. Truer than ever. I mean, it's the same thing. We can be across any platform at any time, but um, but I do need to take a break for a while mm. and you know break a few things. And even you know our, our other platforms will slow for a while, uh, but and we might talk about that in a minute. We will mm. definitely continue to support the community through this transition with other resources and other ways of connecting. In fact, I'll just talk about it now quickly. <laughs> so we will be launching in the um, intermediate stage, lisamessenger.com, again, not about me, but it's a platform uh, where things can be housed. And we'll be leveraging a whole lot of content, like my books and things that just haven't been turned into all sorts of masterclasses. The rest of this year, I will spend a lot of time getting out into the community. I mean, I'm a country girl from Cooler, which is central West New South Wales, and I've spent very little time getting out into regional Australia, and we have so many amazing supporters. So something for me personally is to step away from behind the desk and in the day-to-day -day grind and actually go and connect with people on a face-to-face, soul-to-soul, heart-to-heart level and find out how can I best serve? What do you want from me um, and, you know, Collective Hub and everything else in the future? That's really important for me mm. now and also just to take some time for me. And um, through the last, I think, three months, we've been working together on your next book. Yes. Can we say the title yes, now? Yes, we can. <laughs> Risk and Resilience, which yeah. is pretty fitting for this situation. Yeah, it's um, people say to me all the time, don't they? How how do I write so many books? And you know, since since Collective Hub was launched, um, and we decided to be raw and real and tell the story behind the story, I felt like it was my and is my duty and my calling to actually tell my story behind the story on a day by day basis. So. I write pretty much every day in real time and Ames helps me bring it all together. And um, and so I've been writing Risk and Resilience for the last 18 months and journaling every single part of this journey. And so whilst I feel very chipper and upbeat and excited about the future now because I'm really, really, really stepped into this, um, the book is kind of the back journey and a lot about the hardships and, and you know everything behind this decision. Mm -hmm. I think it's good that you're a very transparent boss because <laughs> having edited the book, um, 
in real time through the process of you writing it, I've really been part of every decision, every single up and down, every single good day and bad day and mindset flip that you've had along the way. Mm. And so uh, you're genuinely, I think, the most optimistic person I've ever had the pleasure of life being part of. And I think being in the office on the day that we sent the final issue of the magazine to press was an absolute privilege and a day that I'll never forget. Mm. Because everybody, without exception, came in positive and optimistic. And there was such a sense of togetherness um, on a day that people could have been angry or frustrated or upset or sad. Mm. And it was interesting that a, a freelancer was working in our office that day and I always remember came up to you and with the best intentions of the world <laughs> said, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry to hear what's happened to Collective Hub. And I think all of us that took a moment and said, you don't need to be sorry. And we all genuinely meant it because mm. for us, you've given us such, such a mindset of seeing change as a positive and being able to see past a disappointment you might be feeling now mm. and look to an exciting future and that testament to you as a leader. Thank you. Well, I think it's the only way, you know, that like, uh, you know, we've said to the team over and over again, like, <laughs> who wants to be part of something that's in survival mode? Mm. Like we want to be creating. Yeah. And so um, I know you want to talk about the next step and offer some advice from your experience to other entrepreneurs or founders or creatives who might be in this position when they're being pulled in a million directions and they're asking what, what is next for them. And a um, bit of a spoiler alert, I love the chapter in your book about stepping into your genius zone again, as you call it, mm. and how when you feel on the brink and you're bogged down by all the detail, how you enter a space where you can look forward and imaginatively create a new future. So how have you got back into your genius zone? <laughs> well, I was still getting there. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so, and hopefully there are lessons in this piece for everyone, but Ames and I have been working for, yeah, nearly six years, mm. completely remotely, I mean, and a lot of people wouldn't know this. Amy lives in Kayama, which is a couple of hours south of Sydney, as the editor for the entire magazine and does everything remotely. So um, going back to that story about, you know, having three staff in the early days, we want, I want to work with everyone as specialists, not generalists, and have pretty much no full-time staff moving forward for a while mm -hmm. and have everyone on contract basis and pull things in on a project by project basis just to give myself some time and space and also to allow people, some of our existing team, um, the opportunity to work to their best skill set and not be also drowning every day in things that aren't their speciality. So, yeah, so we're not going to have any full-time staff for a while and I am not going to have an office for a while and that is the first time since October 2001, 22nd of October 2001, so 16 and a half years ago, when I had my first employee and an office, it's the first time I won't have had a full-time employee or an office in 16 and a half years. And, um, and that feels pretty liberating. And I think mm -hmm. from that space of quiet and calm and stillness and just being for a while and educating myself and starting to take time and space, that my two biggest words this year, time and space to listen to podcasts, actually attend conferences, get out amongst the community, work with extraordinary people on projects. Like, um, you know, spend more than an hour connecting with thought leaders that we interview and actually delve deep into what makes them mm -hmm. tick. So, yeah, sometimes as we always say, it's that old cliche, we have to slow down to speed up and speed up I will. You know, it's in my absolute nature and I do believe that this is truly just the beginning. Yeah. So let's um, talk a little bit about our community and the ongoing connection that you're going to keep with them. Yes. Because we were at a launch this morning and another person came up and said, I love Collective Hub, it's my Bible, I don't know what you do without what we do without you. I read it every day, it gives me confidence and faith and hope. And that's hard when at that time this person didn't know the collective was closing. So I yeah. suppose, what's your message to the community who do rely on the mag for their daily inspiration hit? 
Yeah, I, I suppose a few things. Um, of course, we will continue to support you and transition you. But the other thing is, you know, and I've loved watching this as you have this evolution. When we launched Collective in March 2013, the word entrepreneur was, I mean, it was around, of course, but not so mm. much and startup and things. It was kind of ridiculously in a way in its infancy. And I think I'm so proud that we have given voice to so many extraordinary entrepreneurs and startups and game changers and thought leaders and people from so many different industries. And um, and we've also been the platform to inspire them and you know lift each other higher and collaborate and everything else. Um, what I think now is that there is such a beautiful community from that that can all be there to support each other a little more for a while. Um, but of course there'll be access to you know all the archives of the 6,000 or so articles and we will transition a lot of people over to lisamessenger.com for now and to make a lot more digital content and digital masterclasses and as I said there'll be a lot more events within the communities and you know just a lot more real-time connection but at the moment, I'm not even going to pretend to know what the future of Collective looks like, but please um, just continue to stay on the journey. Collective Hub, uh, all the social resources will still be there and we'll probably utilize those a lot more at the moment to tell people's stories. But um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not gonna pretend. You know, I talk all the time about detachment from outcome and surrender, and that's when the truest things come and your greatest calling occurs in my experience and I've, I've done that twice in a big way in my life um, with my first book happiness is and then with collective hub and so for me it's like I'm not going to pretend to sit here and say exactly what those resources look mm. like um, what I can say is that I'm definitely feeling into a big tech play <laughs> so watch this space watch this space and so finally, I guess, what would be your advice to any other entrepreneur or entrepreneur or creative or any single person who is standing at a crossroads, kind of knows in their heart of hearts that what they're doing isn't working, isn't the best way for them to serve and needs to find the courage to take the next step and pivot, morph and involve in a new direction? Yeah, I, you know what, it's really ironic as you were saying that I was feeling into it and thinking, it's almost the same, it's the same advice as a startup. I'll give you a red hot tip. It is really, you know, we all talk so often about how difficult it is to come up with an idea and to start something and the investment of time, money, whatever it happens to be and disrupting. And you know what, it's equally as hard getting out of something <laughs> that takes even more courage. You know, I had, I had no idea how difficult it would be to wind out of something that's so big and that in itself is an incredible lesson. But however big and however difficult it might seem, and that some days it did seem completely insurmountable and it would have seemed easier just to stay in it. And I was just like, no, I really need to be courageous enough to break this. However hard and complex and expensive, mm. it's a lot more expensive getting out, you know, than getting in. Um, that's gonna be, I need to be able to do that. And so I would say to people, and this is where I'm personally so excited, like keep evolving, keep changing, keep stepping into your genius zone, keep challenging yourself, keep bucking the status quo, keep learning, keep educating yourself, keep moving forward. Don't stay, don't stagnate, you know, keep evolving. <laughs> I think that sums it up. Yeah, thank you everyone. Thanks Ames. Thank you for coming on this journey, being on this journey and certainly we will continue to work together on a daily, hourly, minute by minute <laughs> basis forever. Um, and thank you so much to our incredible, beautiful, inspiring, loyal, kick-ass, <laughs> unbelievable community. You are why we have done what we do every day. You are why I will continue to do what I do every day. And you are the reason that I have been brave and courageous enough, I'm getting emotional now, to step into this and to do this. So I look forward to taking you on the next part of the journey and um, you can be sure as anything that I will continue to share and be authentic and raw and real and continue to tell you the story behind the story as and when it evolves. Thank you.